right? So you got this kid, LaMelo Ball, who is an exciting young player for the Charlotte Hornets. Um, Playmaking ability out the wazoo, high volume score. Um, Not the most efficient, but he can shoot it really well. And play in a certain way that's just, he's an offensive guard. He's a taller Trey Young, in my opinion. He's going to get there at some point. But his passing is what separates him for a little bit there with the talent there, where I can see them taking a risk on this, uh, on LaMelo Ball. But his injury history is the only thing I have a, a little scare here with, especially he only he played 75 games the previous season, but he only played 36 this past season. So, of course, with those ankle and shin injuries and stuff like that, uh, that's the only cause of concern. But if those, if those things are in, in check, I think that's going to be an exciting pickup for the Charlotte Hornets. They have a guy there that they get, like have dubbed their franchise guy uh, by default. He's the only young guy there that's that elite level, I think, that can get to that elite level. Um, and there's no question I believe he's going to be good with his passing and his shooting and stuff like that. That's going to get better. His decision-making, of course, all that stuff is going to happen overnight. But – um, we're going to see what Charlotte's able to build around this kid, right? Like LaMelo Ball's highlight factory, him and Miles Bridges, who is still an unrestricted free agent at some point, for, of course, because of um, the domestic abuse situation that he had. And he's going to work his way back into the league. At some point, I believe somebody's going to take a chance on him. Maybe it's going to be Charlotte trying to work him back in. But um, that was a highlight factory. <laughs> that was an absolute highlight factor, what he was able to do down there. And if Hornets are smart, they're going to continue to keep building around that. Mark Williams is down there as well. Can he continue to develop as a big man? Uh, we'll see if they're going to be able to bring back P.J. Washington at what number, if they can bring him back. Um, but at least they have their franchise stalwart right now in LaMelo Ball. Um, we'll see what they do roster-wise with Terry Rozier and Gordon Hayward and see if they can get some picks there. That was the smart move, I would think, that would be for the Charlotte Hornets if they're able to do that. Um, but we'll see. Uh, moving on to DeMontha Sabonis. Uh, five years, $275 million, uh, $217 million, sorry, there with bonus incentives and stuff like that. Um, I believe is 195 guaranteed there. So five years, $195 million for DeMontha Sabonis. Um, I think it's well-deserved for him as well, especially, again, people are ignoring this new TV deal and they're kind of baffled at all these guys getting paid. But again, remember, this is the normal course of the NBA. You guys aren't going to like what Paulo Banchero, Boncaro makes. Just the nature of the beast, right? Like guys are going to get paid in this league. <laughs> That's the nature of the beast. Guys are going to get paid, period. They're going to get paid. The salary caps are going to go up. People are watching basketball, streaming basketball, looking for YouTube clips, looking for TikTok clips. People are watching basketball. NBA players are going to get paid. You cannot get mad at guys getting paid. I'm just going to say that. Um, DeMontis Sabonis, um, all-star caliber player, good passer, good good scorer, um, plays hard, and, and, and is a real offensive hub in that Sacramento Kings offense. Of course, everything mainly runs through De'Aaron Fox, but he's a vital part to what they do. And to have De'Aaron Fox on a contract, to have DeMontis Sabonis, at least you know you got two guys that you can rely on, lean on, and continue to build around those guys. They have Keegan Murray. We'll see what happens with Malik Monk. Um, they're continuing to build. And I think that's really good for Sacramento to have those two guys there and play in that playoff well off each other and um, able to continue to do that. Um, we'll see whatever they're, the Kings are able to do. Um, they have a bunch of cap space that they're trying to figure out what to do with. And it's like, are they in a move to trade for somebody? Are, are, they, in a, in, are, are they in a position to trade for somebody big? Add somebody via free agency who we're not thinking about. Um, let me see who's left there for the Kings here. Here we go. Who's left out there potentially for the Kings that can get Eric Gordon's out there, Malik Beasley, Will Barton, Christian Wood, Kelly Oubre. So there's a lot of other guys out there that are still out there pending um, that the Kings can add to this, but at least they have the Montes Sabonis, they have the Aaron Fox, and those two are the latest extensions there. Um, let's move on to free agency day two, some actual movement.